Now that we've gone through our warm up and we've allowed the horse some time on the lunge line, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our Pessoa system. And so what I have already set up is I do have, you know, um, when we first did the lunging, the horse doesn't need this system specifically and this is just a sur single. They don't need this on to just lunge if you're just moving them around in the circle without putting a Pessoa system on. But what we did is we put a leather or um, sometimes they make them out of nylon and what they are is they carry a lot of rings on them and this is called a sur single and what this does is it allows me, and you can see it, several different places to attach my lines, my Vienna reins, my cords, anything I want to attach. And this is even on both sides. And I even have rings on the bottom, which we'll show in a little bit. What's also on his back, we've decided with our Sur single, we typically put a half pad or a regular pad as well, just to pad the leather and the structure between the horse's back. And now when you look at our Pessoa system, this is a really fun, unique system. And what we're teaching a horse that needs to learn how to connect and collect their body is we use this system to do it. We've already spent enough time on a Viennering or riding the horse to get them to understand the connection with the bridle. And so what we're doing now is we're saying, if we are not on their backs and we're teaching them specific things they wanna work on, we're gonna put this system on. And so Raz Razzle's just gonna stand. The great part about <laughs> Razzle, again, is because he's experienced, he's gone through the rope halter work training. He's gone through everything to be able to stand here. You know, if I had a younger horse that I was teaching, he maybe not, wouldn't be quite so obedient, we'd have to be working on it. What you're gonna see on this system is it's got, it goes under the tail, good boy, and right above his hocks, right around kind of the stifle areas where it's going to sit. And this is just a pad that shields the horse whenever they move back and forth. And what it's connected to is a series of cords. And so a lot of people, when I talk to them, is just figuring out the system of cords and where to put them, okay? So what it first starts with, and as you look at this attachment, it starts with the hind end attachment and it hooks to the back of your sur single. And this is why we don't use a saddle, is because we don't have as many options and where to put snaps and things like that. Some people have put their sur singles and their systems on top of their saddle and they've just removed it. Today, since we're not riding, we're gonna just put the system on them so you can see it, see it a little bit more clearly. Um, what I'm looking for in this connection is just to make sure it has adjustment pieces. If I get my sur single too low, what's gonna happen is it's going to bag and drop and, and bounce like this. So when I'm first adjusting the first piece of the sur single, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that this hind attachment rope is placed in such a way to where it's snug on his hind end, but it's not so high. You run into a lot of trouble whenever things, horses do not like things that grip under their tail. And so if this gets too high, you'll see a lot of horses tuck their butt, buck and do things unpleasant. Razzle's even looking at me right now, letting me know that that's not where it goes. So horses will give you a lot of feedback if you're watching and you're listening. So placement wise, I'm looking for it to stay out from the bottom of the tailbone. When I measure this, if I feel my horse's tail, the bone of their tail stops here and you'll see that my Pessoa system stops right here at the base of his tail, but I'm not letting it get too low. So when I'm looking at measuring it and lengthening it per horse, whether it's a pony or a warm blood, I'm gonna make sure, good boy, Razzle. I'm gonna make sure that it's even on both sides, okay? And I'm gonna adjust it. This already looks like it's getting a little bit low. I'm gonna make sure that it's even on the rope on both, both sides, good boy, good boy. This is why you wanna work with a horse for a while, because if you see what I'm doing, he's literally standing here ground tying from all the work that we've done. I'm flipping a lunge line over his body, which means I've done a lot of my rope halter work and my groundwork to be able to do this with the horse. He's not moving because my intention is not telling him to do something and move. My intention is actually to have him stand here and that's what my body language is saying. And then I'm able to move around on the Pessoa system and I'm able to flip my lunge line over and set my system up. If you're working with a new horse that's learning how to do this, you have to make sure that you don't skip all these steps. You don't wanna get in a dangerous situation, especially when you start attaching cords and different things and lines on top of your horse. So I'm first just adjusting the strap, making sure it's even on both sides, also making sure it's not too low. It's just below the tailbone. I'm gonna bring it up just a little higher. The purpose of this piece connects to the middle of the horse's back. This is where the rider sits. And so what you're looking at, the reason why this is an additional piece on a system is because it's trying to encourage the horse 
to drop their hind end. See how I just, even just touching him, I'm rolling his hips and rolling his body. He's really responsive. He's lifting up through his back, dropping his hind end, and then lifting his barrel up. And so I'm creating collectiveness. I'm creating connectivity to the hind end of the horse without having to be on the back of the horse to do it, okay? Moving to the front, okay? This is a fun, the back is pretty easy to set up. The front is, is easy once you do it a few times. And what you're gonna look at on the Pessoa system is it has, good boy, it has a pulley that moves it also has another, it has two places to attach the cord, here in the front and then in the back. Okay, and so what I'm first gonna do is my pulley that has the snap on it attaches to the right side of the bit. And where I'm placing it, as you can see, is I'm placing it above my lunge line strap. If I put it below my lunge line strap and I start moving, look how my gear now starts getting very busy on the bit. So I'm putting, good boy, I'm putting my snap above my attachment strap, okay? The second place this goes, my end snap. I have a couple of different choices for rings for a reason. If I'm working on inside bending in a direction, if I'm working on straightness, I'm gonna pick one of the lower rings. If I'm working on a higher frame or a hand carriage for collection, I'm gonna pick one of the higher rings, okay? So first things first, I'm just setting the system up. You can already tell just based on the horse's frame. I connected the hind rope first, and then I've connected one side of my bit and my cord on this side. He's already starting to bring his head down. I have one more side to connect. I have my left side. The cords that attach from the bit to the front of the horse, as far as how tight they are, it is determined by your direction and slack or tautness in the rope. And we're gonna go through that in just a minute. This is a lot to listen to, it's a lot to study, but it's a really important system that will do wonders for your horse. It does wonders for your students to actually see how they go on a frame and collect. So right now, we're gonna watch initially, I don't know which horse had this system on um, last, but what you're gonna watch, and I want you to see this, his head, his nose, is behind his ears. And so what I've got set is that this system is actually too tight. Here's how I know it, and Razzle is super gracious. A lot of horses, you would do this to them, and what would happen is they would back up from the tension or they would get worried, okay? And what Razzle is doing is Razzle is just being really super quiet and obedient. He knows it's in the wrong place. His head and his nose is behind what's called the vertical. It needs to be out more. So here's what you're gonna watch me do. I have those two places to loosen this rope, okay? Good boy. I have two places to make the rope a little bit looser, up here on the higher snap and on the lower rope, okay? And I'm gonna make sure it's just loose and it allows him to come to the vertical before I start changing the bend of the horse, all right? It's really a lot of paying attention to how the shape of the horse looks, okay? So when I'm looking at Razzle, I'm making sure, I'm gonna square him up just a little bit, good boy. I'm making sure that he's not behind the vertical on both sides. Once I realize on both sides of my ropes that attach to the bit that he is not coming behind the contact, then I can set him up for the direction that I want the line to go, okay? So when you're looking, I have my system set up to be able to track left or track right. We're just gonna track to our left. We don't have to change anything because we have our lunge attachment strap here. But what you are gonna see is we're gonna make sure that there is a slight bend tracking in the direction I want Razzle to go. So when his head is straight, and I'll have him straighten out, he's such a good boy. When I have him straighten out, what you're gonna notice is he's just tracking in a straight line for the most part. If I'm tracking on a circle, specifically working on the bend of a horse going in the direction I'm going, I'm gonna make sure, and it's just a matter of a couple inches, you guys. You have to pay attention to the size of the horse, the level of knowledge the horse knows. He, he knows quite a lot. He knows he's been in this system before. And so he's very um, willing to work with us and let us do these adjustments. I want his nose, and you can see it from center, slightly to my inside if I'm working on an inside bend, okay? I now have a horse that's also not behind the vertical, so I know my system isn't too tight, all right? Before I send him out this time, I am gonna make sure that my rope system is set up. And so remember how I told you, I work from the back of the rope to the front. And when I'm working my lunge line, I'm making it loop in such a way where I am not, I am not connected to the rope 
to where I've got my hands running through it to get caught. And so I'm gonna make my system set up where I'm safe first, okay? And I'm slowly gonna be able to let him out, all right? The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my lunge whip, which is behind me, all right? And still keeping an eye on where the horse is, staying quiet with my body. I'm not abrupt with my movements, reaching down, grabbing a whip and sending him out. I'm staying really quiet. Now that I'm setting my system up, good boy, this is why you take the time to get untangled. It's because once the horse starts moving, you want to be completely set up, okay? Slack in my right, lunging in my left, whip is set up. I am now prepared to move my horse and I'm going to walk him and probably trot him and make sure that I have the tautness of the lines that I want based on the system, okay? I'm going to move him from the hind end first. So my energy, my eyes, my body is looking at the horse's hip and hind end. And so when I'm making the horse move, it makes no sense for me to stand in front of the horse. What does Razzle do when I'm too far ahead of him? He stops or he turns in, okay? He knows that my body is telling him something different just by moving. So if I want the horse to go forward, I have to make sure, I have to make sure I'm communicating clearly. There's a lot going on in the back of the horse right now. And so I have to make sure first and foremost, the safety, but then also that I'm communicating clearly with the horse and what I expect. So my energy is sending him out on the circle. And then I'm also sending him forward to keep him walking. And now I'm gonna add my cues to make him go into the trot, okay? To run. So we're gonna watch our system. And you have to practice and play with this system to get it right. What I don't want is I don't want snaps that are bouncing on the bit. And I don't want cords that are bouncing on the side of the horse. They will be a little bit loose, but I don't want the system to disrupt the horse when they're taking their steps, not only in their mouth, but on the sides of their body. And so when you're watching him, he's got a lovely trot, this horse. He's got a wonderful gait, okay? He's just floating across the ring really well, good boy. Um, he's sneezing and breathing. So the fact that he just let out a release of sneezing tells us that he's quiet and calm and not worried about the system. His ears are to the side. He's listening to me. These are all little tells, little things that you want your horse to tell you when you're working with the system. Now, going back to the Pessoa, when I'm looking at the Pessoa system, it's got a little bit of bounce on my inside cord. I'm grateful that I have mirrors in my arena because what I do is I use everything around me to be aware of the horse. I'm looking in the mirror to see if my outside cord on the outside of Razzle is too loose or too tight. I do have the bend of the horse correct. So when you watch Razzle, he is in a slight inside bend. So he's tracking around the ring, and as he goes by you, you'll see, he's got his nose and his body curved and shaped in the direction I'm going. Part of that's my Pessoa system, okay? I've got it set up that way, all right? I am gonna do a downward transition because I do wanna change, good boy, I do wanna change my cords just a little. The hind rope is good, but the cord next to his barrel is a little bit busy, good boy, good boy. So all I did was take a deep breath. And again, I've worked with Razzle enough. He trusts and knows that our system and the way we work together. Um, so I can breathe and exhale or even say the word not to him. And he knows that he's supposed to do it. Um, I told him I was going to adjust my cords and my rope. And so energetically, he's able to pick up on that. I'm going to make sure this side is a little tight as well, because here's what I don't want. I want to make sure my ropes aren't bouncing, but I don't have my horse in too much of an inside bend. And so for now, I'm trying to keep this really soft shape. If you have your system too tight and over bent, you're really gonna create misalignment. And you want your horse to learn how to stay between the leg and the rein. And so this system is set up just like your legs, just like your reins, in order to guide the horse whenever he's going around the ring without having a rider, he's staying right between the system. Okay, we're gonna send him back out to the left so you can see the canter work. Good boy. So I still have my lunge rope set up. I'm gonna make him walk. Good boy. A couple of steps, here's why. My lunge whip is just a little far away. So sometimes you get busy talking or, or interrupted and things like that and your equipment gets a little spread out. But the good news is, is you can walk and move your horse with your body and then set him back up 
back to go on the circle. Notice how every time I've put him back on the circle, I have asked him just to go out and walk, okay? I don't want the horse taking off. If I don't have my whip, I don't have my lunge line in place, I'm not prepared, I don't wanna be trying to fix that as the horse is moving faster, okay? We're gonna move him into a trot, to trot. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Oh, he's almost cantering, that was my fault. I gave him a little too much energy with my body and my whip, even though it didn't look like it. <sighs> There's my breath for my downward transition. So that's how subtle, this is how amazing you can connect with your horse. And I'm glad he did that. Because what you saw was you saw a horse that literally I gave him a little too much energy and body motion to make him go. And he thought I meant canter, okay? And so I'm staying connected to him and using the energy I need knowing this horse. So watch, if I have a lot of energy, what is his reaction? He moves faster, he moves further away. If I'm soft in my energy, he balances up. And knowing this horse, I just need quiet and connected and really specific. I raised my whip a little bit. I sent energy to his hind end. You saw him take off in the canter. Okay, he'll go back to the trot, good boy. Now I'm gonna use my voice. I'm gonna use my body to intentionally canter now. Canter, good boy. Razzle is advanced enough also to know his leads, but I will say this Pessoa system does so many things. It allows you to work on upward and downward transitions. It allows you to work on balance and shape. It allows you to work on connected. Good boy, I took a deep breath. You guys notice that? How I love this horse. I love horses. I took a deep breath when I was speaking and he did a downward transition. Okay, it's pretty amazing. I'll ask him to canter again. Canter, canter, good boy. Good boy, that's a good boy. Here's his canter, if I want a bigger canter. Good boy, bigger walk circle, more energy. If I'm working on intervals and speed, I can speed him up and then watch my energy soften. I immediately just breathed, softened my energy and you saw the horse do a downward transition. Now what you're seeing in this transitions, the really cool part that you're watching is that he's, he looks really smooth. His body is staying connected, his head is staying down, his hind end, his back, his barrel, everything looks like it's working together. So when I do an upward transition, canter, canter, good boy. Notice how there's not a lot of change. If I have a horse that needs help, good boy, canter, if I have a horse that needs help working on transitions because they raise their head or they pull, keep going, good boy. They pull their head up, they pull their head down. This system allows them to work within themselves. So the way this is set up, it's wonderful, it's on cords, good boy, good boy, is that it can work within itself. The horse is not fighting me as the rider, they're actually feeling the system give and pull based on what it's trying to get him to understand. Okay, so whether that's collection, bending, moving, shaping, transition work, all of it's connected. Okay, I'm gonna do a deep breath and do it downward. He even knows, <laughs> what a good boy. I am gonna set my system up to go the other direction. What you're gonna see, it's not a lot of adjusting now, all right? I already have the majority of this system in place, okay? So when I set my hind end rope, I don't have to move that rope unless I want to make his hind end come even more under himself, which we can do. I would slide these ropes up and make this hind rope just a little bit tighter, okay? Come here, bud. We'll go to both sides and adjust the hind rope first. It's really good that you have a horse that stands that's used to lines and ropes. Um, some reactions when we do put this hind rope here is a bucking motion because they feel it making, and even just me touching with my fingertips, look how responsive he is. Even just this, <laughs> good boy, what he feels is this tension here. And some horses don't like it, they'll kick at it. So a lot of times, and I'll do it just for example, a lot of times before I even have a Pessoa system on, I'm working lines around my horse. I'm working in such a way, look how he doesn't care if I've got it around his feet, he doesn't care. He's not moving if I'm flipping it over his head. He's not moving. He has no worry 
that I'm doing anything with cords and ropes. And typically for a flight animal, <laughs> which is what they are, they would be a little concerned, all right? They're, they're not gonna stick around for the fight. Um, but when you make enough time in relationship with your horse and you work with them through all these systems, amazing things happen um, because now he trusts me. He knows that he's literally sit he, sitting here in cords and lines and sur singles and lunge lines doing whatever I ask him to do because he trusts me. He trusts that relationship. Okay, so going back to this, I've got this a little more snug to bring his hind end up and underneath him a little bit more. I'm going to change the bend. I was just tracking to my left. I now have to change the bend and track to my right, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm changing the bend of the horse and it's hard when they're standing here. So his head's a little bit low. I wanna make sure I don't have him behind the vertical but I also wanna make sure that I've got him tracking to the right and eventually an inside bend. Now, because he's behind the vertical, his nose is slightly behind that straight line from ears to nose. I do need to loosen my left side, okay? So if I tighten one side, you have to make sure first, it doesn't make the system, good boy, it doesn't make the system bring the horse too far behind the vertical, okay? And standing still is a little bit tough, sometimes you have to walk. So for, I'm guessing, but just by enough practice, I'm making sure that he's not behind the vertical. I loosened my left side. I made my right side a little more tight on base cord and on bend. And now I'm gonna make sure my lunging line is correct, okay? Always work with your lunge line in such a way when I wrap my cords up, I go from the back to the front. So when I'm laying the line over, it makes it really easy to set this line up. And I don't have a hand, I don't have anything caught to where it can wrap around me. If I have to get out of the system or let go for whatever reason, I am in a safe position, okay? I'm tracking to my right so that my right hand is holding my lunging line. I'm gonna move Razzle. My lunge whip is also now a little further away. So here's a fun thing you can practice. I'm gonna move my horse around the circle at a walk. You definitely don't wanna trot or canter at this point. I'm trying to work my way back to the aid of the whip. And so I'm walking in such a way. Good boy. And I've practiced this with this horse, okay? I've practiced picking up lunge whips, ropes, you see how calm he is. Some horses, you guys will react. You'll pick up a whip and they'll bolt, okay? Because a whip to them means go. And so what I've practiced with Razzle is my energy, what I'm telling him to do. I've practiced picking things up, throwing lines over. He completely trusts our relationship and system and work, okay? He's walking a little bit behind the vertical. So what I'm watching, he's stretching, but he's also walking a little behind. I'm gonna send him out in the trot. I'm still looking at my system. One, I'm making sure he's not behind the vertical with his nose. Two, I'm making sure he's slightly bent in the direction I'm going. And three, I'm looking at the cords. Do the cords all look connected? Is there bounce? And because I'm using my mirror, I can see on that opposite side. If you don't have a mirror in your ring, you can have a person. So you might be able to stick a person on the outside and say, hey, will you look at my Pessoa system and make sure my outside cord isn't bouncing. Sometimes you can go a little under the horse's barrel to see. If you can't see, use a mirror. And if you can't have a mirror, then use a person, okay? And you can see on the opposite side. You can also see a little bit of bounce in the cord. If my outside rein was too loose, I would see right under his chin that opposite rein bouncing too much. Good boy. What a lovely horse. Good boy. Here's my working trot. I'm gonna work on my transition to the canter. Notice my system, I'm still safe. Right hand holding rein, left hand, sh -sh -sh, good boy. Left hand holding slack and whip, okay? I'm first using my energy and my vocal commands to tell him to canter, canter. If I need a little whip, I might raise it towards his tail. Good boy, good boy. Part of lunging, you guys, before you even put this kind of a system on, is making sure that you can move with the horse and connect. If I get too far behind him, look what happens to Razzle. He stops, okay? Canter, canter, good boy. If I get in front of him, he does a downward transition, okay? So you can tell common mistakes in lunging is just centering yourself. The placement of my body and the squareness of my body is towards my sur single and really towards the back of the half pad towards his hip because I'm wanting him to move out 
and around the circle. Okay, good boy. We'll do another transition. Canter. So looking at the Pessoa system, I've done it enough and with this horse that I'm able to really watch and make sure my cords are correct, my bend is correct, the tightness of all my ropes are correct. He's not behind my vertical. Brrr, good boy. Another way if you don't take a deep breath, if you needed to train yourself to take a deep breath, is to roll, um, roll a letter, roll an R. If you speak Spanish or if you studied languages, sometimes you can take a breath by Good boy. So see how that makes you take a little bit deeper breath. It makes you breathe and soften your energy and the horse does that downward transition. Um, that's the wonderful part about communicating. Good boy. The wonderful part about communicating with your horse is that you can make it whatever you want it to be. You can make it in such a way where he understands your language and words. And I keep it really simple. I have walk, trot, canter. Um, I have a breath for a downward transition or a even a halt. Look how even just a breath. Every single downward transition that I've done with this horse today is done by breathing or done by rolling that R. Mostly by breath. I like to breathe quite a bit. Um, and, and that connects with the horse and keeps him pretty relaxed. Okay. Now that we're done with our Pessoa system, how do we get this off safely? <laughs> okay. So Razzle, he's been such a good boy. He's been super soft in being able to help us learn what a Pessoa system eventually looks like on a horse that's worked in it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off of his mouth first. Okay, so you can tell he's already released. It'd be very difficult to walk a horse in this system. So if you're um, thinking about safety and you're thinking about not only your safety, but the horse's safety, you're, you didn't see me set the system up in the tack room or in the cross ties. And that's a common mistake people make. They'll set it up and then they'll expect their horse on the contact on the bit to walk like that out into the arena. That one doesn't allow them to warm up and two, you're just, asking for trouble. You're asking for them to get upset about the system being too tight. I first released his mouth. The next thing I'm going to release is I'm going to bring the hind rope. I can loosen my system. That's one way to do it. I'm going to tuck his tail in and bring the hind rope up and over it on his back. And so now when you look at the system, it's released in his mouth. It's released on his hind end. And now he's just sitting here nice and relaxed. Good boy. And so everything is disconnected. I can leave this Pessoa system over his back and take it into the tack room this way. Um, you can take it off if you'd like to, if you don't want to get your cord stuck. You can certainly remove all your snaps and lift it off of his back. That's another way to do it. But more importantly, and what you've watched, if anything is encouraging about this, is you've seen how Razzle has stayed put. Anywhere he's been, where, he's, where I've placed him and stopped him, he stayed here. He's aware about things going on in the arena. He knows where we are, but he's very aware that my expectation is that he stands here. How difficult would it be to put on the Pessoa system if I had a horse that was like, I might go over here. Look, there's people over here. Or, hey, I don't really feel like putting my system on. I'm just gonna move my feet. It'd be really hard for me to set up a system with a moving horse. And you notice, good boy, <laughs> you notice what he does is he, he actually responded to my body. So anywhere I, I moved, he moved. Um, but you have horses that don't stand still. You have horses that paw, you have horses that will kick. Um, you have horses that are so distracted by elements that they don't pay attention. You know, this is more of an advanced system. And what you wanna do with this system is you want to make sure you haven't missed a step. Um, the worst thing you could do would be to program a horse to have a traumatic experience with something you put on them. And that's something we don't want to have to do. They are, you are able to reprogram them, but if you don't have to, it'd be much better to take the steps to ensure the safety and the relationship with the horse.